Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on hepatic encephalopathy. For introduction, hepatic encephalopathy refers to an array of symptoms resulting from acute or chronic liver failure. Forgetfulness, decreased cognitive function, confusion, altered sleep-wake cycle, irritability, asterixis, decreased level of consciousness, and even coma, have all been reported. It is often associated with acute and chronic liver failure. For its mechanism, hepatic encephalopathy is most likely multifactorial with neurotoxicity, oxidative stress, benzodiazepine-like ligands, astrocyte swelling, gamma-aminobutyric acid, abnormal histamine and serotonin transmission, and inflammation or edema, all playing some part. Some of the theories are discussed later. Of these, the ammonia theory is the most fully researched hypothesis at present. Let's look at the ammonia hypothesis. This is the most studied and currently most accepted explanation for hepatic encephalopathy. In this theory, decreased breakdown of ammonia and the presence of portosystemic shunts, allow increased levels of ammonia to enter the systemic circulation, and hence to the brain, disrupting normal CNS function. As a pathogen, ammonia may have the following effects. In the brain, increased ammonia levels result in swelling and dysfunction of the astrocytes, to the point where they can no longer maintain the environment around the neurons, resulting in neuronal malfunction. There is also an increased swelling of the astrocytes, which leads to edema, an increase in resting membrane potential, altered chloride pumps, and disturbed neurotransmitters. In experimental studies, ammonia in high concentrations impairs neuronal transmission. Ammonia may alter the gene expression of proteins required for CNS function. High levels of ammonia result in physiological depression, and a change of cerebral energy metabolism, leading to cell death through mitochondrial dysfunction. Another theory is due to bacterial products. Bacteria have been shown to break down amino acids into products that can contribute to neurotoxicity and hepatic encephalopathy, such as mercaptan and phenols. Produced in the intestines, they are shunted around the liver and enter the brain to ill effect. Bacteria are also possibly capable of producing GABA-like compounds and modulating inflammatory responses to cause or worsen encephalopathy. The third hypothesis is related to GABA neurotransmitter. In patients who present with hepatic encephalopathy, increased levels of GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, have been found. The proposed theory is that increased GABA levels result in inhibition of neuronal function and hepatic encephalopathy. Why GABA levels are raised may be related to the increased synaptic availability of GABA through a more permeable blood-brain barrier, which is known to occur in hepatocellular failure. The inhibitory effects of higher levels of GABA may be further potentiated by neurosteroids, which are formed by mitochondria in response to increased levels of ammonia. Neurosteroids can bind to GABA receptors and potentiate further inhibitory signals. Next, the benzodiazepine hypothesis. Increased levels of benzodiazepine-like substances have been reported in the brains of living people with hepatic encephalopathy. As in the GABA hypothesis, this is thought to increase neuronal inhibition as well. For the manganese hypothesis, manganese in chronically high levels is known to cause neuronal and basal ganglia damage. It is normally excreted via the hepatobiliary route. In liver failure, it is suggested that increased manganese levels damage the CNS and contribute to hepatic encephalopathy. More recently, an all-encompassing hypothesis involving tumor necrosis factor alpha has been proposed. Increased levels of TNF-alpha are responsible for neurotoxicity and hepatic encephalopathy. It is suggested that all of the stimuli that are mentioned in the other theories, raise TNF-alpha levels, and thus cause neurotoxicity. Increased levels of TNF-alpha have been shown to increase interleukin-1 and 6, leading to increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier and increased ammonia diffusion. Further treatment with Enterocept, a TNF-alpha inhibitor, has been shown to reduce severity of hepatic encephalopathy and prevent cerebral edema. Lastly there is the theory on oxidative stress. It is proposed that after exposure to ammonia, benzodiazepines, cytokines, hyponatremia, or other stimulus, astrocyte metabolism is altered to promote the formation of reactive oxygen species, which may damage neurons and impair neuronal transmission. This is a flowchart summarizing the proposed theories including portal hypertension and inability to metabolize ammonia, causing increased ammonia levels in brain, then later causing brain edema, neurotoxicity, altered gene expression, and neuronal inhibition. Other theories like increased manganese, increased GABA, and increased benzodiazepine, also causes CNS neuronal dysfunction, and thus cause hepatic encephalopathy. 
For its sign value, hepatic encephalopathy is specific to liver disease, but needs to be differentiated from other pathologies that may produce a similar set of signs and symptoms. It is seen in 30 to 45 percent of patients with liver cirrhosis. In acute liver failure, the presence of hepatic encephalopathy has negative prognostic value. In one study, 31% of patients in acute liver failure with encephalopathy required liver transplant or died, and 71% of patients in another study of severely encephalopathic patients had similar outcomes. So hepatic encephalopathy is associated with poor prognosis. That's all for this video. Thank you.